right, so now I'm going to show you how to make your own digital data packs out of ordinary blank tapes and files off the internet. Here I am at my computer and I've downloaded a big archive of, uh, of Coleco Atom software. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that data file and convert it into a WAV file. Now it's a little bit tricky to do this, so I got to show you a couple of little tricks on how to make it work so that you can record them onto this. First of all, if uh, the file you downloaded is in a form, it's in a disk format, the best thing you can do is download the uh, Coleco Atom emulator, and then you can convert it to a tape with a software like Backup Plus or something. So um, I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's you know way more in depth than I want to go. Uh, you can readily download digital data pack files. Uh, it's DDP files. There's a special piece of software that you have to use to uh, convert it from uh, from the data file into a WAV file, which you can use to record onto your cassette. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do this. So what you want to do is download a piece of software called CAS Tools, I think. Is that what it is? Or CAS Tool. Um, I'm going to give you the link in the uh, description on where to download this. You can download it for Windows and it's already compiled for Linux and Linux is the operating system I use so I'm going to show you how to do it with that. It's a command line tool. So it's called CAS Tool. CAS Tools. CAS Tool. I can never fucking remember. They chose a stupid name for it. And you get all these um, you get all these specific types of files that it will convert for you. And you can see right here that there's a digital data pack um, Coleco Atom format. So I got this onto my computer and I can now use that software to convert it into a WAV file. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so here's my big collection of uh, Atom computer software, and there's and so we're gonna do games, of course, because games are one of the most fun aspects of the um, the Coleco Atom. Uh, the one I want is Jeopardy. Jeopardy, this version of Jeopardy is really fun, so we're gonna extract it. Uh, we're gonna throw it in, throw it in there. That's where I've been doing all my stuff here. Um, let's show the files. Um, there it is. Rename. So I'm just going to call it Jeopardy. Uh, that's eight, that's eight characters, right? I want to make it uh, DOS friendly. DOS file names uh, generally consist of eight uh, characters for the file name and three characters for the extension. So that's what I got here. So now that we got that there, jeopardy.ddp. So I open a new terminal here and I gotta go to the uh, directory where I have the jeopardy.ddp file. Now cast tools, is it cast tools or cast tool? I don't fucking remember it, it's just, ugh. So you type cast tool convert uh, DDP, uh, Jeopardy dot DDP, Jeopardy dot wave. So what this is, is you're typing the program name that you want to, um, that you're going to use, which is cast tool. You're telling it what you want to do, which is convert. You tell it the format you're going to use, which is DDP for digital data pack. Uh, here's the file that you want to convert from data, and this is the output file you want, the WAV file that you want to create. So you type all that, press enter, wait for a moment, and it'll let you know when it's done. And there it is. Der, uh, our, yeah, just type ls. Uh, Jeopardy.wave is right over here. Look at that. Good. So let's get out of there. Let's get out of there. Now what you want to do is you want to open this up in a wave uh, editor. Um, a lot of people use Audacity 
I don't use the Audacity for this. Instead, what I actually use is an old piece of Windows 3.1 software. And it run, it actually, I actually got it to run on Linux, and I'm very happy because I use it for all my really basic audio editing. So, you go and open it up, which is right here. Close that. All right, <clears throat> so here we go. We gotta open the file. We gotta go find it, which is in the, my garbage directory here, wherever the hell it is. It's in here. Uh, right there. And we're gonna find jeopardy.wave. There it is. Now, there's uh, certain things you have to do when you're copying it. Because what you have here, I'll show you. Uh, go like 100 here. You see these two bars. These are actually uh, wave files. Two separate wave files. This is the left channel, this is the right channel. Now, the Atom computer does not work like that. It doesn't have a left and a right. Well, I, I guess it kind of does, but the tape only goes in one direction. You don't flip the tape over and use the other two, the other two tracks on the other side. So you have one track on one side, one track on the other side. So it's mono uh, going to direct, going, it, it's, it is stereo, but it's, it's hard to describe that. It, it is a stereo file, but it's only one direction. So there's only two tracks on the tape. So the left channel is going to be side A, and the right channel is going to be side B. Now, cassette players don't run like that. They don't run in one direction. They run one direction this way, and one direction coming the other way. So you have to make this work so that you copy it correctly. And I'll show you how to do that. So what you want to do is uh, select all here. I'm showing you how to do it in Creative Wave Studio because I don't use Audacity for this. If you want to use Audacity for this, go right ahead. But this is my tool of choice. So you select all, uh, force to silence. I'm going to force the right channel to silence because we're going to record side A first. Okay. So we force that to silence. Uh, then we convert the format to mono. So that we have the same noise going in both channels because uh, cassette decks are generally stereo cassette decks. So you want the noise going on both channels. And we're going to amplify it by 400. So this is what it sounds like when you hit play. That's really, really loud. Very, very loud. And yeah, that's annoying as shit. Uh, the wave file, the wave file is um, less than 30 minutes long, 20 some odd minutes, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that's why we use 60 minute cassettes to record this. All right, so you gotta take your digital data pack, go over to the tape deck, and uh, get it ready for recording. Let's do that. All right, uh, so here's my Onkyo tape deck. Beautiful thing. If you're wondering why the cover is missing, it's because I'm always adjusting the tape head on this side. The other side, I usually don't. I can use whichever one I want here. So turn it on. All right. Hit record, and when you hit record, then you can see the uh, the VU levels here. So I'm gonna hit play on the computer, so I can see where these levels are sitting. I'm gonna turn this down. Now I want to jack it up to about plus three, for uh, plus three decibels here. And I just want to hit the tape a little bit harder so that there's less chance for errors. And I'll start that again. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we got our volume level set. Now all we gotta do is hit forward. Now this is an auto reverse tape deck, so we want to set it so that it stops at the end of side A. And once the tape starts, I usually count to about um, like 15 seconds uh, of tape, just so it doesn't fuck up when it's rewinding the thing. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then you go hit play on your computer. And there we go. Now this is gonna sit here and record for about uh, half an hour. So I'm gonna 
Cut it here, come back in about half an hour, and I'll show you how to do side B. Alright, so side one of your cassette is all recorded. Right on. Okay, you're halfway there. So let's uh, open up our, our uh, wave file here. Now the great thing about Creative Wave Studio is you can hit edit and undo, and it'll undo everything you've done. So you're starting uh, completely fresh over with your wave file here. So you, you get the stereo wave file again here. Uh, so you select it all and go special force to silence. And this time instead of doing the right channel, you're gonna blank out the left channel, which is the other one. So let's do that. Uh, same, this is, this is basically the same thing as before. Uh, convert format to mono. There we go. Alright. And then you amplify it by 400 again. So here we got the WAV file. Now, here's the trick. What you gotta do with this one is you gotta reverse it. So it's playing the other way, because that's what we're doing on the cassette recorder. So we gotta reverse it so that it's playing the other direction. And so now that we have that, um, we can head on over to the tape recorder. All right, so we're back at the tape recorder here um, with our freshly recorded side A. Now what we want to do, um, we got to listen to it. We got to find the very end of the sound. So hit play. There it is. Now we're gonna hit stop right when it's when the sound stops. Right there. So you take the tape out and flip it over. Right at that spot, you flip it over. Um, Hit record again and make sure that there's sound coming in. And there is. Now, you have one hand on your mouse button, one hand on the record button, and once you hit the record button, you gotta start playing the WAV file right away. There we go. Now you got side two recording. So now we gotta wait for side two to finish up, and then uh, and then we can give this thing a test and see if it works. All right, so now it's time to find out if my freshly made digital data pack is going to work on the Atom. All right, so let's put my newly made digital data pack in and hit reset. See what it does. It's seeking. That's a good sign. Now I just gotta wait and see if anything pops up on the screen. Look at that! It's working. Keeps fucking up a little bit. One thing you might have to do with your digital data packs, um, a lot of times when it goes through a cassette player, it's like it goes through a capstan and pinch roller, and it kind of leaves the tape a little bit uneven. So what you gotta do with your tapes, it actually says this in one of the manuals of the Atom, is to tape, take the tape and do that a couple times. Okay, let's throw it back in, and hit reset. And now it's seeking fine. And there it is. So who would have thought that recording a wave file off your computer onto a cassette would work in your Coleco Atom? Well, I knew this because, well, during the entire recording of this episode, I've been making my own digital data packs, and I got a whole bunch of these now um, because they take an they take an hour each to make. So just, you know, while I'm doing my thing up here, I'm down, I've got a tape going downstairs. So, uh, yeah. 
now I got a big stack of these things, and I'm, I got a couple more that I want to make. The next episode is going to be me showing you uh, some of the software for the Coleco Atom. But we're not quite done yet here. I need to make an AV cable that goes from the Atom up to the uh, to, to AV ports. So I got some stuff here to do that, and that will be the next part. This digital data pack, uh, all the ones that are made on the computer have the uh, directory. Like, like there's two places that a digital data pack has a directory. Um, they either put it in the center of the tape or they put it at the beginning of the tape. Some programs and software work better with the directory at the center. Some work better with it at the beginning. And from what I recall, my copy of Jeopardy when I was a teenager worked uh, much better with the directory at the beginning. I think it loaded faster. So what I might do is you take you take a uh, Buck Rogers tape, make a copy of it, format it, and then uh, use software to copy the entire game over to the other data pack. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing here. So as we can see, the uh, <laughs> Jeopardy is loading very slowly, but it's loading it's very successfully, too. This is interesting. It says copyright 1986 Coleco Industries. Now that's interesting because they quit making the Atom in 1985. So this, it looks like this came out after the Atom was. <laughs> and there we go. It's all loaded. You gotta choose your one player, two player, three players. See, you can you can get three family members in playing this game, and it's just a load of fun. I had tons of fun with this when I was a teenager. It was, it's just fantastic. And don't forget to label your digital data packs. Look at that. Because a digital data pack without a label is just a blank tape waiting for a Judas Priest album. And there you have it.